Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Rhett. Um, don't forget to like or subscribe. We've got some pretty cool stuff today. We're going to keep churning out these videos for you guys and uh, try to give you all the information that you need to decide if you want to be a, a Section 8 um, landlord or a Section 8 real estate investor. Um, also, don't forget, and I forgot to mention this in a couple previous videos, write your questions down below. I'd love to see what some of you guys are thinking. I'd love to answer some of your questions, especially if I'm not hitting them in some of these videos. Okay, um, it'll just give me more something else to talk about and um, I, I wanna make sure all your questions are answered, guys. When I went into this years and years ago, um, I went in kind of, uh, kind of blind. I, I learned it all on the fly, learned it all on the go and um, sometimes when you learn on the go in real estate investing, it costs you, okay? I've made just about every mistake in the book when it comes to being a Section 8 landlord and uh, you know, from the purchase of the properties to the rehabs to, to uh, the tenants. So drop your questions below. Don't forget to like and subscribe um, and let's get to it. Okay, so if you watched the last video, we talked about the pros of being a real estate investor in Section 8. Okay, today I wanna to talk about the cons. It wouldn't be fair just to talk about one or the other. I'm gonna lay out all the facts for you guys and let you be the judge of what you wanna do. Okay, so the cons of being a Section 8 uh, real estate investor. Now, there are longer processing times for tenants. What does that mean, okay? So basically what happens is you buy a property, you want it to be Section 8, right? You wanna accept a housing choice uh, voucher for that property. Okay, you want to do all the good things we talked about in the last video. You want guaranteed rent. You want a utility stipend for your tenants. You want to make sure that they're not damaging, screwing up the property. You want to make sure there's a little bit of overhead, making sure they do the right thing as tenants, right? Okay, that comes at a cost, right? Guaranteed payments every single month, it comes at a cost. What is that cost? Longer processing times. So, you go out, you find a property that you love. You say, wow, they make a great Section 8 property. You purchase it. Okay, you go in, you clean it up, maybe you gotta do a little bit of rehab, get it ready to go. You get it ready to go, okay, you put it on the market, right? There are some really good resources for people that have vouchers that are looking for places to put them, okay? Uh, aside from normal places like Zillow or uh, Realtor.com, uh, normal places that you might go to find renters, find tenants. Uh, one that I use that I love is uh, GoSection8.com where a lot of prospective tenants, especially those that have Section 8 vouchers, housing vouchers, will go, okay, and they'll look for properties knowing that if that property is listed on Section8.com, GoSection8, um, that that landlord will accept their voucher, okay? A lot of these tenants have a really, really tough time finding landlords who are willing to accept these vouchers and I just don't know why. So that's why I'm here doing this. So some of you guys start accepting them because they are good for you. They build wealth, build wealth, build wealth. Now, you buy a house, okay? You get it all outfitted. A tenant goes on Go Section 8. They look at your ad, they love it. It's a beautiful house. What do they do? They make a phone call, okay? They call you and they say, hey, I really wanna, I, I love this house. I wanna come check it out. They come down, they check it out. They love it, all right? What they do, they give you the phone number to their caseworker. Okay, previous video is we talked about every single Section 8 tenant has a caseworker that handles their individual files, okay? That caseworker will send you over a packet, right? You take that packet, you write down all the info about the property, every single thing that needs that, that is inside the property, what you're covering as a tenant, uh, I'm sorry, as a landlord, what the rent is, that whole thing. You give that back to them, all right? Included in that packet is what you want for rent. So when you hand that into the caseworker, when you email it back, when you drop it off, they go, okay, all this stuff looks good. We agree with the rent. Or hey, can we meet somewhere in the middle? We can only do this number. Let's do this, let's do this. Okay, it's a negotiation, right? Except instead of negotiating with the tenant, you're negotiating with the caseworker. And they are fantastic usually. They're gonna do everything that they can to make it work because they're trying everything they can to get their, their, uh, you know, their person into a home, okay? Their, their, their client into a home, right? So they're gonna do everything they can to work with you. Now, once the HUD, which is the caseworker, and you have an agreed upon rent price, you have everything is agreed upon, you're ready to sign the leases, okay? HUD is gonna send out a inspector to your property to make sure that it is good, right? There are certain aspects of the property that need to be up to date being a because you're you're now volunteering you're now entering into a government program it needs to meet government specifications right there are certain requirements that need to be done now it's it's small things and we'll talk about this in another video how to pass a section 8 inspection okay 
Um, I've passed, obviously I've passed every single one of them, but I've failed a ton of them too, okay? And that's small things, right? That's, um, you know, having, uh, not having um, uh, uh, grounds for outlets and having a couple three prongs, that's a big no-no. It's small things, right? It's maybe having a two prong where a three prong should be. It's, uh, you know, having a, a door that closes, but it, it is a little bit off and the weatherproofing is a little bit off, right? Those are, that, those are failure points, okay? Having cabinets that are, when they, you close them, they, they're a little bit open, right? Those are failure points, right? So um, there are certain things that happen. And the good thing is about that though, once a Section 8 inspector comes out and checks off on your property, the second that he signs off on it, boom, you're starting to get prorated rent from that day. Even if the tenant doesn't move in for another month, right? Maybe they're finishing out another lease. You're getting prorated money starting that day that it passes inspection, okay? Now, because you have to submit all this info to the caseworker, they have to get your security deposit, they have to set, they have to set up a, a date for an inspector to come out, the inspector, you know, goes over it, submits it back to HUD, okay? That takes a while. It's not like you just list your property on Zillow and somebody, you know, might call and say, hey, let me drop off a check. I'd want to put it under, um, you know, put it on a hold. It's not like that. But you have to understand too, it's a government program. The money's guaranteed and the benefits for you are large. So I think personally that that longer processing time is worth it, but that's up to you. It's your money, okay? So yearly maintenance. Now, just like any rental property, there's maintenance, okay? The thing about the yearly maintenance is, HUD will send out an inspector once, maybe twice a year to these properties to make sure they're in good working condition, they're livable, nothing's damaged, they wanna protect you, they wanna protect the tenant. But if they go in a place, okay, and there are some cracked tiles, there are some things that are broken that you're responsible for, okay? They're going to give you a sheet, they're gonna tell you what needs to be corrected. Now, it's only you know big things, okay? Leak in, the, uh, leak in the living room needs to be fixed. There's you know a bad part of the roof. It's coming through the ceiling in the living room, okay? Um, things that you're responsible for, okay? We're not talking normal wear and tear, right? We're not talking uh, needs a new rug because it's dirty. We're not talking about um, there's a chip in the sheetrock where the kids were playing uh, you know football in the living room when they weren't supposed to. Not that kind of stuff. Big stuff that actually needs to be addressed, okay? Um, and that's good for you. Some people look at that and go, oh, I don't wanna have to do maintenance, I don't wanna have to do this. Then shut this video off, because if, you're, if you wanna be a slumlord and you want these people to live in, in terrible conditions and you don't want any oversight at all, shut this off right now. I don't want, you know, that, that's not good. That's not what we want, these are human beings, okay? And there is definitely a fine line. Now, maintenance is good because if you, if HUD goes, right, and they see a leak in the ceiling, maybe you can fix it. It might only cost you a couple hundred bucks to put new shingles over that area and replace a little bit of decking. It's not gonna cost you 5,000 to get a new roof six months later, right, after it snows and it melts, and now you have a huge problem where you gotta come in, you gotta put a new roof on, you gotta put a new, uh, new ceiling in. You don't want that. This is good for you. Yearly maintenance is good, okay? Now, now, just like anything, there is a chance for bad tenants. Now, I believe that the way that this program is structured, tenants are incentivized to keep, the pro, keep their houses in better shape, okay? But with any government program in history, there are some people that abuse the system, okay? That is on you. You still get to choose who lives in your house. You can still run credit checks. You can still do background checks. You can still see criminal records. Okay, so if there are some things that don't look good to you, don't rent your place out, right? People that are on Housing Choice voucher, vouchers, they still have to, you know, submit their paperwork to you. You still have to accept it, right? So you still choose who's living in your house, okay? Um, so that's a big one, okay? There are always gonna be system abusers. There's always gonna be bad tenants. No, no system is foolproof, right? So you have to do your due diligence as a landlord, which you guys already do. You guys are good landlords. Just continue to do that, okay? Um, and lastly, another con to this program is, at the end of the day, it's a government program, right? Government is slow. A lot of the things with this program can be slow. Sometimes inspections are backed up, right? It could take a little longer than usual. Um, to get somebody in your place.
The good thing is when somebody submits a packet to you to move into your property, they cannot go elsewhere, okay, until that property is inspected. So if, it's, if there's a three and a half week backup to get an inspector to that property, that tenant is stuck with that commitment to you on moving into your property. Even if you fail, even if that inspection comes across and you fail, maybe the door wasn't weatherproof tight enough. Maybe the door in the bathroom has some, some paint on the side of it. It won't close correctly. Maybe you forgot that uh, you know when they painted the exterior of the house, the, the, the window in the kitchen won't open because it's painted shut, right? Maybe you just forgot that stuff. That's happened to me a thousand times. They give you the opportunity to correct that. You still have a chance to correct that without losing that tenant. That tenant is locked into you. They made a commitment to you. It's your responsibility to make sure that the property is done right and that that tenant has a nice place to live, but they're putting the onus on you to make sure it's done, okay? So you're still in control. The landlord is in control, all right? Now, it's a government program, so it moves slow. And government employees are behind everything moving, okay? So, long holidays, okay? Case workers out of the office, right? Don't forget that. A lot of times you're dealing with the caseworker and not always the tenant, and you just have to understand that at the end of the day, it is a government program. You're dealing with government employees. I don't have to go into that. You guys know what that's about. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and leave your comments. I'd love, I'm gonna get to all of them um, and make more videos. All right, guys, thanks for watching.